Hi everyone, welcome to this very special Lori Wired Valentine's Day video, where we're going to take a look at Valentine's malware, also known as Valware, although that term didn't really catch on, I wonder why. But it's basically just any kind of malware or phishing campaign that uses the excuse of Valentine's Day or love to infect your system. We're going to take a look at a lot of examples over the years, so let's get right into it. Alright, put yourself in this scenario. It's currently 2001 and it's February, it's getting close to Valentine's Day, and your coworker sends you, you an mail. email, and the subject is here you have, and it claims to have an attachment called anacornikova.jpg. And Anna is a real person actually, she's a very attractive Russian tennis player from back in the day. So you open it up, you double click on it, and you're expecting to see a picture of her, and nothing happens. And I think that's the worst part about this virus, is you don't actually get to see a picture of her. But something's happening on the back end, because the picture that you opened is not actually a JPEG, it's actually .jpeg.vbs. Which should really show you, if you do not have file extensions enabled on your computer, make sure you can actually see file extensions. Because the double file extension trick has got to be one of the oldest in the books, it's very entertaining. So instead, what this is doing is it's running in the back of your system, and it's now forwarding this email to every single one of your contacts in your email, so that it spreads just crazy to everybody. Now this became known as the Anacornikova virus, although the actual person had nothing to do with it. It was made by some guy in the Netherlands who basically just said he wanted to test and see if IT was capable of preventing this kind of spread, which Obviously, they absolutely were not. He got in a lot of trouble for this, and it turned into this kind of interesting fight between the Dutch government and the FBI, because the FBI wanted to have a huge fine and have prison time for him, and the Dutch government pretty much said, no, nah, we think he didn't have any kind of intended harm, which I don't think he did. He was just kind of goofing around there. And he ended up just getting community service hours as punishment. And additionally, he got offered a job by the Dutch mayor as an IT position. I think the two funniest things that stand out to me is that the Dutch government was really proud of this guy because they said they couldn't believe that they produced such a talented young man. And the reason the guy said that this spreads so well is because of the beauty of Anna Kornikova. So what do you think? Now let's talk about an email and network worm that was also VB script, but had an interesting exploit inside of it so that it could automatically execute when you previewed the email. So what it would do is it would download a file onto your system and then also set your Internet Explorer homepage, Internet Explorer, that's a throwback to a second site containing a second worm to further infect your system. And this one also took place in 2001, I think early 2001. I don't really know what was happening in 2001, but all the malware authors just decided to push the boundaries and see if they could infect people, and what better way to infect people than use Valentine's Day as an excuse, apparently. I guess a lot of people had the same idea. And the interesting thing about this one is it was completely destructive to your system. So first of all, it would only execute on four different days of the month. It would execute on the 8th, the 14th, the 23rd, and the 29th. I don't really know how he picked those arbitrary days, but he did. And then what it would do, on those days, it would delete all of your system files, so your system is completely messed up at that point, and replace it with a love letter. So instead of all your important system files on your computer to execute properly, you just have copies and copies of his love confession to this girl. So the email body would say, Que cosa mas tonta? So it was really originally written in Spanish, ignore my pronunciation, which translates to what a silly thing. But you might be wondering what happened to all of these system files. There is an in-depth love letter for all of them. So I'm going to read that. It says, Hello, my name is Onel2, and I'm going to use your files to declare my love to Davinia, the most beautiful girl in the world. Happy Valentine's Day, Davinia. You are the prettiest and the nicest. Every day, at all hours, I think of you, and every second that I don't see you is hell. Do you want to go out with me? <laughs> As for you, user, this is talking to the person that he infected now and destroyed their system, I must tell you that all your files have not been contaminated by a virus. That's a relief, even though your computer doesn't work. 
but <laughs> sanctified by the love I feel for Davinia. That should definitely be a relief there. I don't know if this super worked out for him. He is using infecting a ton of other people's systems to declare his love for this girl. I have to wonder, did he also send it to her? Or did he just use everybody else's systems? Because I don't think she'd appreciate having her files messed up. Maybe he thought that he was going to end up in the news and that's why he did it. And if that's the case, he was probably pretty successful because I think a lot of people were talking about this. But I don't know if uh, she would actually appreciate that. So there's the question. Let's move on to 2002 and 2003, where the Yaha Worm was making an appearance. Now this one had the subject, melt the heart of your valentine with this beautiful screensaver. And I don't know about you, but I know a screensaver would melt my heart, as long as it's beautiful enough. But what this did is it infected people's systems with this valentin.scr file. Valentin, not valentine, by the way. Make sure you get that right. And that's a malicious screensaver file. And there's a lot of different variants here, but what it did is install itself as an EXE on the system so that it would automatically run any time you ran any executable on the system as well. So if you ran this once, your system was like majorly messed up every single time you tried to open it. You pretty much cannot get your system back after this. And it would change the screensaver on the system to all these different nice loving phrases like you're so cute today you're my best friend i like you very much that reminds me of that song hey i like you very much i think the most interesting thing about this particular worm is you can go on this old forum called checkpoint delta which is some old video game and this guy is just having an absolute meltdown meltdown from this worm so he goes on there and he says this thing destroyed all of my files so bad he lost 22 gigs of maps music addresses all of this stuff he's just saying what do i have to do to get this up and running and he's also saying that this is a category three threat i don't know what that means in terms of malware but I guess I'm thinking in terms of hurricanes. Category 3 sounds pretty bad. Doesn't sound very good. And nobody can help him on this. He has completely lost all of his system. The craziest thing about the Yaha Worm is it's estimated to have done $11.5 billion worth of damage to systems just by infecting systems and making them completely unrecoverable. Let's go to the year 2004, which is the year of the Sober Worm. Now picture this, you speak German and you receive an email and it's supposedly from a 21 year old go-go dancer who is a model looking for work and she's including sensitive images of herself to try to get extra work and you open this up and there's not actually pictures of her inside and suddenly you've actually been infected with a worm. But now you're talking to your English speaking coworkers and they received an email that was also a scam but they received a completely different version. For some reason, with the Sober Worm, they targeted different groups differently. Not sure if this was some attempted profiling going on here, but if you had a German or Swiss domain, you would get the Gogo Dancer version of this. If you had any kind of English domain, you would get this delivery failed notification as an email, or it might just say, oh God, as the subject line, and try to get you to click on the zip contents inside. I don't know if this is effective or not. Maybe take a second and think for yourself which one would get you. I think that the, the oh God one would get me, because I would be like, well, what is it? I want to know. I think that might be the most likely one. Now, obviously the pictures in the zip file aren't actually real. It really just contains a copy of the worm that infects your system. The interesting thing is it doesn't really seem to do much to the system. In fact, no security researchers really figured out what it did. Maybe the person was just messing around and kind of seeing if they could infect people, which they did. They infected quite a few different people. So what it does is it sets itself as a reg key so that it automatically executes on system startup. Maybe it could run extra code, but it also propagates itself and sends itself to all of your email contacts. Pretty standard behavior as well. But it does this weird check to see what the domain of the target recipient is to see if they're German or Swiss and then they get the go-go dancer version of this or if they're some kind of English speaking person and then they get like the failure version of this. 
It's very interesting behavior. Let's jump over to 2009. Now there used to be this spot net called Storm that didn't really have any particular theme to it, but decided to make a Valentine's Day specific variant known as Walladak. And now what this did is it sent some kind of puppy love e-card to people to try to infect as many people as possible. E-cards really aren't a thing anymore. I remember you used to be able to make them from those really sketchy websites because you were a terrible friend and forgot somebody's birthday and then had to suddenly quickly create a new card. But this one had a subject saying, your friend has given you a Valentine's Day card. And it was actually pretty effective at infecting people. You're like, yay, I have a friend and they've given me a card. Now the actual payload of this has two different aspects. The first aspect is that it will traverse the infected machine and try to parse out and steal different passwords or anything that it finds on the device and then uploads it to its C2 server, but it also can receive commands from the C2 server. So it just sits there and waits for remote commands to try to execute and do different things or maybe try to propagate itself even more. And this one was actually taken down by Microsoft in 2010, but at its peak, it was responsible for 1.5 billion spam messages per day, which equates to about 1% of total spam in the entire world at the time. So now it's dead and it's gone, but it was really prevalent during its time. Now, one of the most interesting things about the Walladak botnet was that when Microsoft was taking it down, in February, they won a court order to have a temporary takedown of those domains. And then in September, they got a court order, so they were in control of all those domains. So they were effectively able to shut down all of the C2 servers, which super, super hurt the botnet. So let's jump to 2016, and malware started getting a little bit less silly and a little bit more serious as the years kind of progressed. So the next one is a Valentine's themed ransomware known as Seven, and that's Late Speak Seven. I hate Late Speak so much. This one has a really, really convincing email, heavy sarcasm, that I'm going to read to you. Well, part of it. Our company runs a unique promotion campaign for St. Valentine.s Day celebration, and based on random selection, you have been awarded to participate. The campaign will last from 5 to 14 of February. During this time, you are invited to visit fabulous sporting events, concerts, spent nice time at theater with you lovely friends and family. <laughs> So they give you this email on the top, or this website on the top, called vividseats.com. But if you look at the actual link that they send in the later portion of the email, it's vivid, two eyes in that, ceased.com. This is extremely great social engineering here. Apparently, in order to get to enjoy the Super Bowl or NFL from directly on stage, whatever that means, you have to download this form and submit your information. Now this form actually downloads promo tickets form .doc, which contains multiple exploits inside of it. And this gets the payload, which is actual ransomware to execute on your system. Now this does pretty standard ransomware things and goes through and encrypts all your files, but it also demands a ransom. And the ridiculous thing to me is it's like, 13 bitcoins that they're demanding for this ransom. So the effort they put into the social engineering portion of this is like down here. And then the amount of money that they're requesting in return is like way up here. That's like $5,000 back in the day. I don't know what 13 bitcoin would be now. I really hope someone doesn't reuse this ransomware variant because it's hard coded inside there and that would be extremely expensive. Not only does it encrypt your files, but it also conveniently creates you a Bitcoin wallet. It restarts the computer and then reaches out to its C2 server, and it also threatens to expose your data if the threat of keeping your files encrypted wasn't enough. So it's pretty annoying if you actually fall for the social engineering here and get infected with this. Now let's move on to 2021 where we get a Valentine's Day themed version of Baza Loader. Now this infects users in the form of a spear phishing campaign and the infection process to actually get the payload is just unbelievable here. Now you get this email and it claims to be an invoice from either a lingerie shop or a flower shop. And it says it costs some pretty decently high amount of money, like $400, and it's confirming your purchase. So it has an attached PDF that you can download. 
But get this, the PDF is not actually malicious. You download it and it looks like an actual invoice and it has this reference number that is assigned to your invoice. And it's saying, you know, if you have any problems, you can go to this website, which is like azurelingerie.com. Now, Azure Laundry is a real company and it's based inside of New York. So you go to this website and it looks almost exactly the same as the real website. And even the address listed in this fake website is an address like right next to a Azure Laundry in New York. So they're really close, but for some reason they didn't lie about the address and just say it was that one. They had to pick somewhere nearby. I don't know. <laughs> they had standards as malware authors. Now what you do when you get to this website, you have to scroll to the contact page. You go to the contact page and you can have an issue with your order, so you enter in your reference number. And if you do that, it redirects you to an Excel sheet that you then download, and this is the actual malicious portion. But not only that, now you have to enable macros in the Excel sheet, and if you do that, then it finally executes the payload, which is Baza Loader, which then is able to load a secondary kind of malware. So you have this entire process of infection chains to finally get to the loader, to finally be able to download the malware payload. And that's, that's just kind of a lesson to malware authors. Like, a lot of people, even if they had legitimate purchases, wouldn't go to the trouble of trying to refund their money there. They'd be like, eh, well, I guess that's fine. So if you didn't even order anything, imagine the number of people you're going to actually infect. What, like, two who are going to go to the trouble of doing this? Fortunately for us, having a really annoying infection process makes the world just a little bit safer, and a lot less people are going to bother doing this. Now let's move on to a 2022 Valentine's Day malware. Picture this, you're getting an email and it claims to be a confirmation of a deposit of funds that are about to go directly into your account. And you're like, yay, free money, I like that. But you want to see if it's legit first. So you do your due diligence, you're going, you're looking, you're seeing who the sender is. And the sender's actually somebody legitimate, coming from this legit company called Artifact Uprising, which is a real company in Colorado that does gifts and stuff. Unfortunately for you, this email address was probably hacked, so this is actually coming from a scammer. Now you decide, huh, this looks legit, so you open up the HTML that's attached, that's the invoice confirmation, and you're like, hmm, this is interesting, because now they're reminding you to buy a present for Valentine's Day so the shipping gets there in time. If you take a look at what's actually inside of this HTML document, there is embedded JavaScript that's obfuscated, and if you deobfuscate it, it's gonna take you to this Microsoft login page. But let's say you're not aware of that, so you're following the HTML, and then it redirects you and brings you to this fake login page, and it wants you to enter your Microsoft credentials now. And you're like, okay, I really want this invoice, so I'm definitely gonna follow the bait here. So you enter your credentials. Now what's happening on the back end is it's actually stealing all of those credentials and uploading them to its C2 server. And it's uploading them, the worst part about this, I've seen this so many times, is it's uploading them just in HTTP, completely plain text. So you have your credentials uploaded to a server as well as somewhere plain text on your network. And unfortunately that IP address is associated with Cobalt Strike, so now some attacker now has your credentials. And it's really interesting to just look at the difference between the early stages of malware and the late stages of malware and how complex these infection chains really have to get to infect people. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Lori wired out. Or maybe there's, let's see. There's this heart, there's this heart, and there's this heart. I don't even know the correct way to do a heart anymore. This is fun though. <laughs>